Hello and welcome to the show that debates and reconstructs burning issues of the day. You're watching The Big Picture. India's cabinet recently okayed an amendment, a bill aimed at combating sexual abuse of children, a move that the government hopes will go a long way to curb child abuse. Civil society, while generally welcoming the proposed legislation, have raised one issue that they have trouble with, raising the legal age limit for consensual sex for, from 16 years to 18 years. The caution, say activists, is because the move could push parents in a conservative country like ours to use the new law to sanction their children's sexual behaviour. And not just that, what about the police, notorious for harassing couples all over the country? The global average legal age of uh, sexual consent is said to be 16 years. So while till now sex above 16 years of age was legal as long as it's consensual, having sex with anyone below 18 with or without consent will be outright criminal if both the Houses of Parliament pass the bill. Activists have called the amendment bill retrograde and moralistic. Critics of the move also say that the proposal to hike the legal age for sex also smacks of an urban bias. In India's rural areas, getting married before the age of 18 is common. So the question arises, would they all be treated as criminals now? Tonight on The Big Picture, we debate whether raising the age for limit for consensual sex could prove to be counterproductive. In an age when puberty comes really early, does it not prohibit youngsters from exploring their sexuality as it naturally happens and discuss issues related to physical intimacy? We discuss all this and more tonight. I'm Athar Khan and joining me on the panel tonight is Shamla Papu, eminent lawyer. I also welcome back to the show. In a moment, will be joining us uh, Amita Mulla Awathal, Principal Springdale School, as well as Meenakshi Lekhi, President BJP Mahila Morcha. Joining us on the phone line later in the show will be Girja Vyas, MP from Congress. But I'd like to start the show uh, with... Uh, with Shamla, uh, with Shamla Papu, if I could, uh, ma'am, is raising the age for legal sex from 16 to 18 mm. uh, a bad idea? Only a clutch of uh, so-called non-liberal countries have that age. Do we as a nation want to be clubbed together with nations like Rwanda? I don't know why it is called uh, retrograde or uh, bad or being clubbed with countries like Rwanda. I mean, we have to see the sense of it. Let us see the sense of it. Mm. Population control, birth control, everything is being attempted and a vast uh, section of the finance of this country is being spent on this particular aspect. The result, we are rising and rising and rising. The population figures are going up, 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 up to our despair. Now here is, to my mind, I don't know hmm. what I would be called. Right, right. Retrograde, bad, right, right. whatever right. it is. Fair point. Let's go quickly across to Amita uh, Mula Watal. Uh, welcome back to the show, ma'am. First of all, uh, is it a bad idea to raise the age limit for legal sex to 18? Your first thoughts? Uh, it's not about being a good idea or a bad idea. Uh, what I can tell you that as an educator, what I see around me in schools is that the entire adolescence age has shifted. Uh, attitudinally, uh, 14 is the new 17, uh, the 10 is the new 14. The kind of uh, inputs that young people have today, the kind of um, sort of information available to them, the kind of maturity that has come into the adolescent age has certainly shifted. So I think when you look at things like this, we have to look with more sensitivity as to how are we going to look at this whole understanding of the 16-18 debate because there are so many other issues that also come into the debate. The issues about um, sort of safety for young women who may go into a situation, God forbid, of suicide or abortion uh, because, you know, they may be looked at in a sort of a strange manner with, with all these things. So it's all about how we're going to sensitize our young, how we have to look at this. Uh, so we have to be very careful as to when we bring in something like this. Right, right. Uh, uh, let me move the debate uh, to uh, and take the debate to uh, uh, our other guests, of course. Meenakshi Lekhi is joining us uh, on uh, uh, from Delhi, of course. Uh, Meenakshi, if I could ask you this. The principle of taking a lenient view of close in age relationship is adopted by several countries uh, around the world. If I could just give you some figures very quickly. Uh, 11 states in the US, including California, took the conservative option of fixing the age consent at 18. Now, even though the, the, if, if that's so, its impact has been softened uh, by a close in rage reprieve. This means that if the minor has three or fewer years of difference with the major, 
or if both partners are under the age of consent, they will be prosecuted for the minor offence as a misdemeanor rather than statutory rape. Now, does the absence of such a safeguard in the protection of children from sexual offences bill make the proposed increase uh, age of consent all the more regressive and draconian? Do you think so? Absolutely. I think there are two things. One, a rape can happen at the age of 20, 22, 50, any age. So a rape is a rape. What one is looking at under the 376 and uh, other such offences under IPC, the age of consent has been limited as 16, meaning thereby that willingness or consent between the age of 16 and 18, because post 18 as it is you are treated as adult. So two year gap, uh, it will be treated as if it is consensual, the reprimand for the man is less basically. And it could just be reprimand and not necessarily criminal. Now, why do we want to increase it? Shamla ji talked about population control and several other things. Are we going to achieve that by increasing the age by two years? Answer is no. And again, going back to your introduction that in this country when so many marriages, I don't know, 57% of the child marriage happen only in a, one state which is called state of Rajasthan. In a country where underage people get married, obviously we want to stop and curb all that, but is this the way out? And because we are creating a new uh, section of criminals which are young adults, or late adolescent people. Is this the way can we handle that, number one? Number two, when you're talking about age of consent being 18, a person like me will probably say, till you are able to look after your family, till you are able to marry someone, you should not have sex. But at the same time, after maintaining this kind of uh, uh, a puritarian attitude towards sexuality. I am not going to hang people or send them up to jails if they have had sex between the age of 16 and 18. Fair point, so fair point. The Minakshi. angle of criminality is what needs to be looked at. Fair point, Minakshi. Let me uh, put this question straight across to uh, uh, Shamala Papu. Uh, do you agree with what Minakshi had to well, say? Well, not at all, because she doesn't agree with me either. So, as I was saying, I think, I think it's a very positive step towards uh, trying to reduce the population. Imagine, you close down the population for two years and it's happening on a continuous basis. Would you or would you not agree with me that the figures of the population would come down? Hmm. I mean, honestly, what hmm. would you say? Right, right. Uh, you made that point. Let me go across to Amita if I could. Uh, Amita, isn't this then, if this bill is ratified by both houses of parliament, becomes a law, uh, then wouldn't youngsters below 18 years of age, even if they have consensual sex out of their own free will, be treated as, as, as criminals? And isn't that a dangerous precedent to set in a fast-changing world like ours? Um, well, I think we have to really wait and see what happens because there's so much debate going on. But having said that, there's another angle that uh, I want to bring in because I see that today uh, students in classes 11 and 12, when they are between the ages of say approximately 16 and 18, have a certain mental maturity about them. Uh, I can see it, their relationships have become more relational than in a certain sense, uh, there's a certain understanding about how they relate with each other. So I don't know, I think, uh, you know, a lot of this will get upset, there'll be uh, unnecessary sort of um, uh, checks and balances. It's, I mean, if somebody wants to go ahead and have a physical relationship, they will have it anyway. And to have this kind of policing, I think the, this whole understanding has to be done with sensitivity, it has to be done with making young people aware of safe sex and issues like that. I mean, uh, a law, clamping down laws like this on young people, especially the way that we have so much exposure, whether it is through the internet, whether it is through the TV, uh, you know, we are creating another uh, sort of uh, problem area uh, by, by doing things like this is my understanding. Right, right. Uh, you had a point to make uh, while listening to Amitabh. Well, uh, as my friend was saying that this has to be dealt with in a most sensitive manner, agreed. Most certainly, it's a very vital issue. Mm. But people will become aware, the youngsters will become aware of this themselves. The moment there is this uh, uh, limit right, right. of 
16 years, mm. not being 16 years, but 18 years. Why is a minor uh, of 18 years? Why does a minor of 18 years have a guardian? That is the law, mm. we accept it. But then, some, some people would say the argument here is if, if by 16, 15 people can go around making uh, uh, career choices, other life choices, why can't, if they can, uh, if they can uh, make other life choices, why can't they make this No, but choice? what are the life choices they are making? They are not getting married, they are not settling in life, they are only saying shall I take physics or shall I take maths or shall I take uh, literature mm. and they are deciding about the subjects they are going to study in the college. Mm or specialize in mm. with the assistance of their uh, guardians mm -hmm. because they are minors. Right. And if they are minors for taking decisions, well they are minors for taking decisions as far as mm. their sex life is concerned. Let us look at the other side, let us look at the darker side of this. Uh, if I could come to you Meenakshi Lekhi for a bit, uh, will this proposal not encourage harassment of youngsters which as it is uh, even in our big cities is a persistent problem and if sex is a taboo for teenagers will it not increase the risk of unsafe sex uh, as well as sexually transmitted disease? Uh, Minakshi, if you could hear me, that question was uh, for you. Uh, can you hear me, Minakshi? I, you, I, I'm coming. Okay. I, I didn't know that was for me. What yeah. I was trying to say is that, look, you want to control sexually transmitted diseases. You want to control population. You want uh, young boys and girls not to enter into any sexual relationship. So be it. But there are other means. The mean to make them criminal is definitely not the idea. To, to live in a society and say till you get married and that marriage age could be 30, it could be 29, it could be 27, it could be 25. Till that period you don't indulge in any sexual activities, one way of looking at things. But what if somebody has, you don't make a criminal out of that person. So what we are looking at today is a statutory rape. Statutory rape definition is given in IPC which says anybody having sex uh, up to the age of 16 with any person will make it a statutory rape whatever even if the person has willed even if person has consented so from 16 you are bringing it at 18 that means you are restricting that even if somebody at the age of 16 consents to be with a boy of 18 or 19 the person the the 18 year old or 19 year old should go and serve a sentence at times even life imprisonment in the jail now, a rape is a rape irrespective <coughs> of this provision. A rape will be a rape irrespective of the age factor, 12, 14, 15, 50, 45, whatever it is. So, we are not looking at that. We are looking at what makes a particular act into statutory rape. What I am arguing is that statutory rape definition need not be changed because in states like Mizoram and Manipur, the age gap is up to 14, 15. In Spain, it is 14. In Mizoram or Manipur, it is 15. So, keeping the social realities in mind, statutory rape definition need not be altered. You want to protect. Now, Shamlaji talked about controlling population. That is the purpose of this law. That is not the object, and that object cannot be met with this law in the first instance. The second object which is coming across as per the uh, uh, parliamentary committee, it is that they want to protect children. Now, if you wish to protect children, a rape irrespective of 16, 18, 19 is a rape. If a child gets trafficked between the age of 16 or 18, a trafficking is an offence irrespective of the age and a person can be trafficked even at the age of 20. How right. are you going to curb that? Right. Now, there are various other offences like digital rape, etc., which should have been made offences under the IPC and that is not being done. If Absolutely. you really fair wish point, to protect children, Minakshi, I think, fiddling uh, with genitals, etc. So many other varieties which should be incorporated under IPC and that is not getting Minakshi, done. Actually, fair point. I think Shamla uh, Papu would like to respond to that and after that we will take a short break. Briefly if you could ma'am. Well, um, we need not talk about uh, rape I think uh, in this discussion for the simple reason that we are talking about uh, people, two people getting together and it's being consensual and uh, it's not against anybody's wishes. In that situation, we have to look at this legislation and the 
raising of the age. On that note, uh, on that note, ma'am, we'll take a short break. We'll come back okay. and discuss uh, more of these issues. I have some more questions for all my panelists. Take a short break. Come back. Very important issue we're discussing on the big picture tonight. Take a break. Come back. Welcome back. You're still watching the big picture. Let me go straight to uh, Amita, if I could. Uh, Amita, a lot of legal experts say that this move will help in nabbing child uh, traffickers and those who deal in child pornography. Uh, the rationale is that by removing the consent of the minor clause from the bill and making 18 the blanket age for consensual sex, uh, it'll lead to a clampdown uh, on human trafficking and rape cases. Do you agree with that line of reasoning, first of all? Um, you know, I sort of agreed with what the earlier panelist had said and said that I don't think a law like this will really clamp down on people uh, in this situation. Uh, uh, what I personally believe that as a practitioner, I mean, I'm looking at the way young children are in schoolrooms. And I think that we have to also look at the fact that there are uh, children who are between after 14 enter the labor force. They're doing an earn and learn uh, program. They're bringing in money into the house. It's not the ideal thing, but the, 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 the situation is in our country that, that children are going out there and earning money. Now, they're 14 years old and they're money, uh, earning money for the family. So we have to look at a bigger picture and see how are we going to look at these things. And I think in, in, in the South, in many other places, uh, there are students of, uh, from classes 11 and 12 who go into junior college. They're not even looked upon as school children. After class 10, school secondly seems to stop. It's only in the North here that we, have, we still have schools which go into 11 and 12. But, uh, for, uh, you know, South downwards, students are out there in what is called a college. So I think, again, I have to say that it's the adolescence that has to be looked at and seen. And I, I, I agree there are places in the U.S. where a child, where 18 is the age, but then they look at, they, they sort of look at what is the age, uh, the, the age between the two people who right, are having right. a relationship or who are indulging in this. Right. So I think that also has to be looked at, that if it's, if it's a gap of two to three years, because today girls are having, uh, you know, girls have their menses, uh, say 10% get it in class six, which is about 12, and uh, about... 70% get it in class 7, which is 13, and then another 10%, 20% get it in class uh, 8. So I think, you know, I'm not, uh, what I mean is that we have to also look at the way that society is evolving. Uh, I'm not saying that there should be free sex and, 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 and things like that, but I do think that one has to look sensitivity, sensitively at how the, the youth are evolving, what is happening around them, what exactly is, 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 is in their minds, because I do a lot of programs, seminars and discussions with young people, uh, sex education, adolescent education. So the reality is that there's a lot of uh, sort of conversations and dialogues that are happening. There's a lot of relationship issues that are taking place. We have to really look at this instead of say, making it like a biblical law and saying, right. you know, you're right. 18 and that's it. I mean, we have to be more it's, sensitive. It's important. To uh, the, the point that you mentioned is ours is a very fast changing world and uh, all, all over the world, puberty has started coming early. I think 12 to 13 is when children actually start. Uh, uh, 12, I think, is the new uh, 13, uh, if, I, if I'm not wrong. New 15 or 16. The new 14, yeah. Oh, yeah, 15 or 16 is the new 14. That's exactly what I meant. Now, will this move, I mean, actually, the question goes to you. Uh, will this move not prohibit youngsters from exploring their sexuality naturally as it comes? And also, because uh, if this is viewed as taboo before 16, uh, is, it, there's, is there not a danger that youngsters by the, uh, will, uh, will shy away from discussing issues related to physical intimacy? Isn't there a real danger there if this uh, bill is passed into law? See, I am, uh, 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 let me make it very uh, clear. I'm, I think I'm not able to uh, specify. What I'm trying to say is that I am not saying that six, at 16 one should have sex. That is not the idea of legislation. The idea of legislation is if a boy aged 18, 19 enters into a relationship with a 16-year-old and they both agree to enter into a sexual relationship, 
are you going to send the person to jail answer is definitely no because under those circumstances what one is debating is the statutory rape one is not saying uh, make it a amoral immoral kind of society absolutely, where absolutely. 14 15 16 year old are told oh you, you are free to have sex that is not the idea absolutely, the yes. idea is making a particular law to define it as statutory rape that is the whole trouble now under the garb of protecting child right I mean, please protect children. I am all for it. So when you are protecting children, if an 18-year-old is getting trafficked or an 18-year-old is getting molested or 18-year-old is getting raped by 40, 50, whatever age group of men, it is punishable as it is. The only thing is, even if a person agrees to go with a man, the, the, the person will be looked at by the court in the circumstances in which this has happened. In, in the under the garb of marriage, in pregnant, whatever. I mean, those things will be looked at in those particular circumstances and that flexibility still remains with the court. Right, the right. only thing is that new class of criminals, young adults and adolescent kids, you cannot make them into criminals. Right. Maintain your standards of sexuality, I'm fine with it. If But at the same time, don't... Uh, don't make new criminals. Right, Minakshi, fair point. We take your point that it, it's not like we're try, trying to tell people that, oh, you're 16, go uh, go and have sex. But the point is, uh, if an 18-year-old uh, is, is uh, caught or harassed with a 16-year-old, old, he'll be treated, he'll be uh, tried for statutory rape. Now, that, of course, is a problem. That's a very fair point, a uh, very good point you actually raised. Let me ask you this, Shamla. Uh, do you agree uh, that there needs to be certain revision uh, of uh, the consent of the minor clause in the upcoming amendment? Or do you think uh, it's... Uh, all right as it is. Uh, well, I have already said enough on that, I think. And I think it's absolutely all right. I'm a big optimist. And I don't think negative at all. Mm. And uh, I think these are fears are all, if I may say so, with the greatest respect to my fellow panelists, mm. uh, without any basis. So you're saying the fear that this might be misused is unfounded? Misused? No. Everything can be misused. Mm. Everything can be used. Mm. Now. Why don't we think that, that it's going to be used properly hmm. instead of thinking it's going to be misused? Hmm. Hmm. Now, I think that by telling youngsters, you concentrate on your studies, you concentrate on things which are creative and um, sex is out for you hmm. till you are a minor. Hmm. If that is told to them, that will instill a kind of a discipline in hmm. them. And I think child trafficking, child porn, all this will come down and I think it will have very positive results. Right, right. Uh, let me quickly go over to Amita and ask, uh, ask Amita this. Would you say there is after all a silver lining here or do you think that the bill needs to be more sensitive to the issue of consensual sex between two minors who are over 16? Does that clause need to be, uh, does it need to be revisited? Uh, for this to actually work and, and because of course the rationale of the government is that this is being done to protect uh, children uh, to do away and uh, with child abuse. Do you think that clause needs uh, a revision, a revisit? You know, uh, again I want to say, I mean, school and learning is all about uh, creativity, it's about uh, understanding, it's about looking at the way you, uh, you grow. This is not the issue. The, 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 of course, as, as, as the, uh, the other panelist has mentioned, it's not as though anybody wants children to start having sex at the age of 16 or below, or even above that, uh, beyond 18, uh, I mean, after 18. The point here is that, again, why should a child be open to a criminal situation? After all, if you are saying that a child below 18 is a child, because you're an adult at 18, then the moment the child has unfortunately or for whatever reason got into this space, knowingly or unknowingly, because still there is a certain lack of mental maturity, then we are going to completely criminalize the child. I don't know how we're protecting that child. What worries me is that, you know, a, a child's life will then get fragmented. And this is how we have to look at it. Of course, schooling is about making them understand intellect and understand creativity. And, 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 but, but that's not the way to say, don't say no to sex because you must go towards studies. It's, it's a natural phenomena. We have to understand that. Children are also growing up. But in some way, if they just go in a, in a certain manner, and, and then they shouldn't feel as though, you know, for the rest of their lives, they've been looked upon as criminals. Because it is a very natural instinct. Right, so right. Why are we, I, I'm not saying that you should go ahead and do this. Right, uh, right. Please. 
please don't get me wrong on this I, but children should not be made criminals if we are saying that they are minors i think shamla has one a point that i'd like her to make briefly ma'am <laughs> very briefly mm -hmm. i'll make it mm -hmm. uh, what i'm saying mr khan is why don't we uh, try and see how this works right it may work beautifully right and all these fears may be left behind so you're saying give shadow. it a chance let's see give what it happens a chance. yeah it can always be revised right. there can always be uh, a revision fair point no I, I, problem. i completely i completely understand that for the last word i must go to minakshi lekhi minakshi my pointed question to you is this what is the other option the government needs to check uh, the rise of child abuse cases in the country will an amendment to this age of consent clause make it the right ticket will it make this law uh, better um, and more uh, uh, teenage friendly if i could call it that Uh, I don't agree there because if we want to make law teenage friendly and we we do have law I mean we are looking at when we are looking at age of consent it is specifically dealing with rape and it is statutory rape that one is dealing with uh, what government is trying to say by statement of objective is very different by the manner in which it is sought to be achieved if we are looking at making the law children friendly we need to incor incorporate certain acts into the definition of rape as well as amend the modesty of women i mean we can bring in a separate section we can include children we can deal with those clauses uh, uh, i am saying upon is upon it becomes worse the degree becomes worse if the person involved is below 18 and it still remains upon even if the age is 50 Uh, a trafficking is trafficking whether a 18 year old gets trafficked or a 20 year old gets trafficked so we need to deal with trafficking the statutory rape definition clause is only with respect to the consent age let's not alter that because social reality and the uh, uh, country's realities are very different and even the world over realities are very different under the un uh, child right uh, thing also the age of consent is 16 right right fair point uh, that's when we end the show we are completely out of time of course my panelists are uh, slightly differing views there uh, there is one school of thought that says give this amendment time give it a little bit of time it might just work beautifully there is the other school of thought of, of course which says the statutory rape bit in the uh, in the uh, clause that mentions age of consent Uh, perhaps should be looked at a little differently, and of course, uh, the point of the show, I, I think, in my mind, uh, is what Amita uh, Watel said: uh, criminalizing uh, teenagers or people who are below uh, 18 years of age. If that happens, that of course will defeat the purpose of that bill. That's all the time we have from the big picture tonight. Till next time, when we get you another edition of the big picture with another issue and another eminent panel. Uh, goodbye, good night, and thanks for watching.